Wrong button. <laughs> Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Stranded Alien Dawn. Here's some tips and tricks that I have learned from uh, several hours, actually, quite a few hours, actually, playing this game and uh, just figuring out exactly how it is. It's a pretty good game. I'm kind of enjoying it. It's very, very easy to lose many hours in it. Although, one thing I would like to uh, preface this with, if you're the kind of person that gets triggered about uh, things not being the exact size, like uh, this right here, like that, then uh, you may want to rethink yourself because that's just going to happen regardless. Uh, yeah, it just is. So, yeah, all right, let's get down to a bunch of tricks that I have learned from my time playing this game, and hopefully they will help you out. All right, now, when you first start, when you first land on the, uh, or crash land on the planet, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have, well, one, one or two, maybe even three of your people, they'll be too busy crying their eyes out over here. Whichever ones are not doing that and are actually kind of, you know, stable at that time, you want them to either start, uh, salvaging the spaceship that you got so where you can start getting uh, uh hopefully finding some weapons and then uh once you have one person on that you want to start going out and find a food source some sort of berry bush or a uh, bitter a uh, buttermelon or something of the sort uh and start observing it so where you can immediately plant it and then you also want to see if you can find this stuff right here grain cob this is this stuff it proves out to be quite invaluable and then once you have that, once you've gotten you observe it, then you can, uh, wow, that's kind of cool. Uh, once you have that, you can actually start running farms of it. And once you have the farms of it, make sure you build a wall around that or else animals will come in. And then sometimes, like what you're seeing right here on the screen, which is kind of interesting, I'm not sure how this could be a tip, but about, uh, I would say about a 30% of the chance on all the playthroughs that I've got on day six early morning you'll get a fifth survivor i'm not sure what causes it but i've gotten it about 30 percent of the time and i've played i want to say about eight playthroughs on this so far and then make sure that you have an independent bed for every person here And make sure that the bed is out of the rain because, yeah, it will get really weird. So what? That's our her. Oh, she loves cooking. Okay, we've got to cook, guys. All right, and also when you're setting this up, make sure that you're paying very close attention to uh, what uh, activities that you have set on these guys. It is kind of important. So it's like this one person just came in. She's all of a sudden just set up for all this. Really what I want her to do since she has no idea on how to heal anything. Uh, I just want her to uh, basically be cooking everything for everyone. I'm not sure if I want her to actually craft anything or mine anything uh, or scavenge anything. I want her to be planting and cooking. That's really it. And then maybe running a few things back. So pay very close attention to this and make sure that you kind of micromanage this because you kind of need to. And it will help you out in the long run. All right, now whenever you get the aggressive animal thing, what you want to do is you want to take whatever person that you have with a weapon and then bring them out so where they can just take control of them uh, with the uh, draft command and then just put them in the way of everything. So where you don't really want to take them out hunting or else they'll get attacked. But if you can kind of uh, bring them just close enough to where they can start shooting on the aggressive animals and kind of pull them out one at a time, it'll save you a lot of med packs early on. Just like this. He's easily able to handle just two or three, but when they add up, It does get out of hand. All right, so once he's done with that, we can take him, bring him back here, and then actually we can just undraft him, and then he can go in and just get treated immediately. All right, now if your characters can't, if they don't have high enough skill level to actually build some of the things, one of the things you can actually do is actually just have that one person do the task until he levels up and then see here right now i none of my guys have high enough uh, survival skill to require 
or to uh, build a modern wooden room or a wooden floor for that matter. So what I'm doing is I have uh, the one guy that has the highest construction just have him do it while everybody else is out gathering all the farms or uh, the uh, logs for the one once this guy levels up or they're tending the farm, salvaging stuff, doing all that kind of such. All right, and now that he's leveled up, I can just take this whole thing and then I can just cancel all that. Oh. And just deconstruct the entire thing. Yep, all right, they're gonna deconstruct that and uh, yeah. And once again, I'll have this guy right here doing that. So where he's just leveling up his construction the entire time. And then I'm not going to use all my scrap metal on this item right here. I'm actually going to build in wood because it has much better thermal insulation for getting through the winter than uh, stone or than sticks or scrap metal. Stone actually has a pretty good one, but I actually prefer wood. I just like the look of it. And then now that we've got uh, the regular crafting skill that we wanted to for all of this... And we can start building. And you can build uh, the individual flooring and then the walls and the roof yourself. Or you can just build a room and then it makes it a little bit more... Uh, it makes it a little bit easier to manage where you don't have to do the, each individual piece. And then once you build a room, you can actually build the individual rooms inside of that. And here, let me show you. So if we want a big house... Hit that up like that. And then in the individual bit, you can go like this. And you can actually section off independent rooms for them. It's where they can each have their own private space. Because private space in this is rather important. Put a doorway here. There. So we've got one room there. And we can just section off this entire left side over here just for independent rooms for the five uh, survivors that I've got. And make sure early on in the game that you set up the lightning rods. They are important to keep your survivors alive. I know it seems weird, but uh, there is a lot of thunderstorms that happen on this planet, apparently. Like there, lightning just hit my wooden chair. All right, now it's important when you're setting up your food for your survivors, if you go to just any uh, campfire or later on when you get the stove or the uh, um, other ovens, you can go up here just to quick recipes. Eventually, you'll have a bunch more to choose from. But quick recipes, you can just kind of say, all right, so I want uh, grain porridge. But how I want to put it in is just until, and then we just go like two or something like that. And then till uh, that way there, we've got it so we're set up. So where as we have the resources... They'll just continue to cook the stuff until we've got like two on hand and then four on hand. And then later when you get refrigeration and the stuff lasts a lot longer and you have big, huge block uh, refrigerators, you can actually have them. So where you've got entire shelves full of this stuff and they'll always maintain that there's 10 on hand at all times. And so where when you're cooking these things, just make sure that you use the until and not, uh, you know, just cook 10 at a time kind of thing. All right, and also, once you unlock fermentation, you can plant down a fermentation barrel. Once that's built, you can actually use this grain cob stuff to have them make antibiotics for you. It's very important. So as you get through the winter months and it gets rather cold and then heating tends to be a really big problem, then uh, you'll have the antibiotics that you need to actually cure them. Now, whenever you're curing somebody with pneumonia, make sure that you have someone that has a high, um, a high medical skill or healing skill that um, heals them just because uh, when they heal them they can eat there's a certain different things that they can do one is they can uh, they can fail another one is that they can treat it but it just holds it off another one is where they uh, have basically a critical that means that they make them immune to uh, um, pneumonia in the future so you kind of want them to have ammonia and have it get treated and so where you have that chance with the high healing person to actually make them immune in the uh, um, 
Oh, in the future. It does kind of help out. Pay very close attention to that. All right, now when you're placing fences around your uh, farms, and I recommend that you absolutely do this, uh, you can do poles, which is a little bit heavier on wood, but it does it is sturdier. Or you can use stone if you need to. My area right here, unfortunately, does not have an easy access to stone. So I'm just going to use these wooden ones because it's going to uh, make it a lot easier. Now, setting this up is kind of a pain to begin with, but it is very, very worth it. Alright, so you have your outer bit like that. Now, we want, need some way to get in. We can use fence doors that allow... That allow everybody just to freely walk on in. And now, another quick and easy thing is instead of having to come down here and click on... All you have to do is click on the thing you just placed, and you can put copy. And then you can just quickly put it around like that. So now we've got two different entrances. Actually, I think I'm going to go with a third. Come through here. Put another one over there so where they can freely go in. And also, early on, you want to pay very close attention to your uh, um, research. And get... Um, if you, Whatever uh, survivors you pick in the beginning, make sure you have at least one or two that can do some pretty serious research because it is important. And this will determine just how fast you uh, progress. And, of course, copy is an important thing. And once your building is most of the way done, you can kind of just start setting up a bunch of the stuff inside. Of the shack. Well, technically, this is not a shack. This is a full-fledged uh, full log cabin. But also, another thing that you'll uh, encounter is the need that uh, as soon as uh, they start coming inside, they'll develop a thing called cave-like living. Every time they're walking around and um, when they've got no regular flooring, they'll start lose. They'll, they'll be unhappy. So the way that you get around that, and this one took me a little while to figure out, is you have to put down flooring for it. Now, you can put down stone paving, skin bark, which is this stuff right here that allows you to, uh, it's like, has like this leathery skin kind of stuff that allows you to put down stuff. Also, you can go with uh, ceramic tiles. Honestly, I just like the look of the wood, even though it may, means that we have to cut down a few more trees, but... And now we gotta cut down a few more trees. Now, apparent, um, I mean, with Ken, this guy right here, being my only guy that's able to construct this right here, he's gonna be going through a little bit of mental problems. But, uh, as long as he just gets through it, he'll be fine. He'll go over, he'll beat up on this, and then, you know, he'll do a few... Th Wait, he's the only one with a gun. I may have an issue, but yeah, he'll have his little meltdowns, but he'll be fine, I swear. It's fine, it's fine. And as you're going through this, don't skip out on the um, things like ale and coffee and tea. They really help out with your survivor's uh, mental well-being. Just having the little uh, amenities of some sort of semblance of real drink and food that allows them to relax at a table. It, it is very important. Also, coffee actually has the, be the added benefit of a caffeine boost, which is rather important. And it's really good to give your researchers so they can just hard focus on learning the stuff for you. It's pretty cool. And once you have that uh, wooden floor actually uh, made, instead of the uh, cave living, it actually turns to creature comforts, which is a bonus of plus five. So instead of losing, you're actually gaining. So it, it's very important to just get that floor in there as quick as possible. And then also get the bed set up. And then once the beds are built, you can uh, assign them each to uh, individual one, give them their own room, so where it really enhances their uh, uh, livability within this space. Now, another thing I want to uh, mention is when you mouse over certain things, notice up in the top left corner where it says uh, the uh, temperature. Now, if you go over just about anything, it'll tell you how hot it is. That's not good. And also remember, when you're trying to uh, build back up your survivor's happiness, uh, whatever skills they have, if they say they are interested in it, they actually get a happiness boost from doing it. But if they, uh, are indifferent to it, they actually kinda, it, it's more meh to them. So they get 
they don't get additional happiness. Matter of fact, I think it actually hurts their happiness. So just pay close attention to that. Make sure that you assign the individual peoples. Like this guy right here, Simon, he's really good at a bunch of stuff, but he just loves making those clothes. So let him. All right, and then as you uh, get their house about made, you can actually start uh, making this a bit better. And then I always end up making an additional building off to the side so where I can just use this straight up for storage. It's where I can start running some of um, the uh, regular storage right through uh, the stockpiles, get some sides on the shelves. I like to put a little bit inside the rooms. I like to get a lounge chair in each of the rooms, a storage chest in each of the rooms, maybe even a wardrobe so they can have additional stuff. We're about to have a bug attack. That's not good. And then... Where's Rita? Yeah, pay very, very close attention. Oh, so they're end up they're eating each other. Okay, that's fine. I'm fine with that. And then these nests. Make sure um, before you go tackle these, because these will constantly spawn a bunch of bad guys. So you make sure. Yeah, run, Rita. All right, you make sure that uh, um, they always have. Uh, you're always clearing these things out. Uh, because you have to go in here and you have to clear out the insect nests or else they'll just um, constantly be uh, spawning. So yeah, it, it, it is kind of important. And then also uh, make sure that um, later on when you get the uh, balloon so you can start sending people out on expeditions that uh, uh, you uh, send out people that actually have bonuses for the expeditions because they are there. Um, let's see. Yeah, this right here will tell you. Um, this guy right here gets additional scrap metal um, during uh, expeditions. It's kind of important. It actually helps out quite a bit. And this right here, um, she can uh, just observe unknown objects during a uh, thing. And I'm in the midst of having a massive meltdown. And apparently Ken is idling. All right, so hey, yeah, I hope this hel um, video helped you out um, on your journey. I hope it uh, answered a few questions. I know there was a lot when I first started. I couldn't figure out a few of the different things. And I ended up figuring out, and it, this is actually a really fun game. I love spending a lot of time, and it's really, really easy to uh, lose just hours in this game. It's it, it's that good. All right, so hey, um, yeah, if you haven't already, make sure you click that like button. I really appreciate it. If you're new around here, subscribe. And Rita is freaking out. Alright, so until next time, take it easy. I gotta fix Rita.